Um, so for all intents and purposes, it's just a group that's the complexification of some compactly group. Uh, X, a compact Kähler manifold. Uh, with what I'm going to call just a nice action of G. And I won't really elaborate on what that means, but in the usual case, uh, X is a smooth projective variety. Uh, with a fixed embedding into some projective space and the group action of G on X is induced by a homomorphism from G to GL n plus one C. So in general, the naive quotient that you might want to take just X mod G is not well behaved. For example, it might not be a scheme or a variety. Um, so essentially the idea is to replace this instead, you restrict to oops, some semi state some subset of X called the semi stable locus of semi stable points, which I won't really go into, but it does coincide with our notion of semi stability for polymorphic bundles. Uh, and construct uh, the GIT quotient. So you mod out the semi-stable locus by the action of G. And then this is a nice space for the most part. Okay, so let K inside of G be maximal subgroup um, so in particular uh, so in particular we know that the complexification of K is equal to G and then suppose the restricted action of K on X is symplectic. So it preserves the Kähler form. Uh, which I don't think I named, so preserves the Kähler form, which I'm going to name omega if I have to reference it later. Okay, so let this script little k be the Lie algebra of k. Then a Lie algebra element c uh, determines a vector field, just the infinitesimal action. Um, so I'm going to name this x of c and the def for, for, p, for a point p. Uh, the tangent vector is just d by dt is d equals zero x of t x e dot p. So just infinitesimal action given by the Lie algebra element x e. Okay, so definition is symplectic action. Um, of K on X is Hamiltonian. Uh, 
if for all the algebra elements, xi and k, there exists a function, I'm going to call h sub c, xi from x to r, such that 1, the mapping from xi to h of xi is k equivariant. Um, so the action on here is the adjoint action. And then the action here is pre-composition by translation. Or, yeah, pre-composition by translation. And then two, so you take the Kähler, if you, for any point P, if you take the Kähler form, and then you feed it the tangent vector of the vector field determined by Xi, and pair it with any other tangent vector. This is equal to the differential of the Hamiltonian function oops, at P evaluated at V. Uh, so, as I've been saying, these functions are called Hamiltonian functions. Okay, so I'll follow this up immediately. So suppose with another definition. So suppose we have a Hamiltonian action. Of K on X, a moment map uh, for this action is a K equivariant map. Uh, so, you usually denoted mu that goes from k to oops, uh, the dual of the algebra. So, um, I think the action here is conjugation, and then the action here is the co adjoint action. If I recall, or no, it shouldn't be from k, sorry, x to k. Uh, such that for any point P in X, tangent vector V in the tangent space at X, and some Lie algebra element C and K, if you take the differential of the moment map at P, you feed it V, and then you feed this thing, C, this is equal to this. So this is equal to, as we said above, this will be dh c at p of v. Uh, Jeffrey, I'm, I'm a little confused about something. Yeah. So k here is the Lie algebra, right, of our maximal compact? Yes. How is k star defined if that thing has dimension bigger than one? Sorry? Um, it's what the, what do you mean by k star? It's and, the dual space of oh, oh okay, the okay. algebra. Thank Sorry. you, thank you. All right, so that's the definition of what a moment map is. So uh, when you say r moment map, you, you mean this is not unique? Yeah, it's not unique. Uh, you have yeah, there, there there's choices involved. But I think, I don't know this super well, but there's like a bunch of like conjugation or something, you can get a different one and so on. I see. Um, right, so I definitely mean A moment map and not B moment map. Okay, so now fix an inner product. 
on Kate Dual invariant under the coadjoint action. And let, so we're just going to let these, this denote the induced norm. All right, so since x, I, I believe I said x was compact. If I didn't, it should be. Oh, since x is compact, um, the norm squared of the moment map, so this is going to be map from x to the real numbers, attains a minimum. Um, so up to translation by some element, we can assume it's zero. Uh, I should say minimum value. Um, one second. Uh, this might be a little confusing. Okay, but uh, hmm. okay. Uh, that's how I'll say it. Okay. Um, so let K in K dual or don't want to use that letter too much, so just A or maybe M, B element. Hmm. Okay, this is a bit confusing, maybe in the image of mu such that the norm of M is minimal, uh, then the symplectic quotient is u inverse of m mod k. Um, so you have to show that this doesn't depend on the choice of moment map. Um, but I think I've seen somewhere that some things do change when you change the moment map, but I'm not exactly sure. But most people do refer to this as the symplectic quotient. So, and then usually this is zero. Um, okay, so we have two different quotients in play here. So we have the symplectic quotient, and we have a GIT quotient, and then we want to know what the relationship between them is, and then so this is the big theorem. So this is Kempf-Ness. Kempf-Ness. Um, so using the setup above, uh, the G orbit of any semi-stable point. So in the semi-stable locus contains a unique k orbit minimizing the norm squared of the moment map. Um, and then this establishes a homeomorphism. between the symplectic quotient and the GIT quotient. Okay. So let's see how this applies in our situation. So
let's recall some of the details. So recall our setup. So X is a Remon service. E to X, a smooth complex vector bundle. <coughs> Uh, or I should, I should just say Hermitian because it has a Hermitian metric. And then P to X, the principal UN bundle of frames. Uh, also recall we have We have an identification. <coughs> uh, between connections on P and holomorphic structures on E. And we also have actions. On A of P by, by our gauge group. And then on the space of holomorphic structures by the complexified gauge group. So the first thing to do is to realize A of P as a Kähler manifold. Um, so we're going to ignore issues of integrability and analytic issues because AFP is uh, infinite dimensional. Um, and we're just going to use the fact that it's an affine space of our vector space and kind of work formally. So what I mean by that is since AFP is affine over, let's say, one forms valued in the adjoint bundle, We can identify the tangent space at some connection with just this vector space. Or, yeah. Okay. So, since X is real dimension two. Uh, the Hodge star um, extended to adjoint bundle value forms maps adjoint bundle valued forms to itself and squares to minus one. Uh, so, so it defines a quote unquote complex structure. So this is an almost complex structure if you're talking about finite dimensional manifolds and, but we're ignoring issues of integrability so we're just gonna say it's a complex structure. Uh, for the symplectic structure, uh, recall we have the pairing this space where you take these two forms and then you integrate over x omega which yeah. where this is the thing you get from taking an adjoint invariant inner product on the Lie algebra and then right uh, and then this is skew symmetric on one forms uh, and 
non-degenerate. Uh, so you can think of this thing as our uh, symplectic form, this pairing as our symplectic form. So next, show that this action is Hamiltonian. Uh, so I think I don't think I mentioned this fact before, but we'll need it. Uh, the okay, so again, kind of informally, the Lie algebra of the gauge group is the sections of the adjoint bundle. So, okay, so proposition, the infinitesimal action of some Lie algebra element is given by A goes to the covariant derivative induced by A applied to phi. Um, so the proof is mostly just a computation, and again, I'll refer you to the notes. Okay, so here's the exercise. Let's do looks like essentially what I said we need to do. Uh, so one, let phi be some section of the adjoint bundle, uh, and then show that this function, which I'm naming, suggestively naming h sub phi, that maps a to the integral x of the curvature of a, which with phi defines a Hamiltonian. defines a Hamiltonian function for phi. Um, so with respect to the symplectic structure that we were just talking about. Okay, so part two, uh, show that A going to the curvature of A <coughs> is a moment map. So I kind of want to summarize what we've done so far to relate this to the GIT story. So in summary, we take our Kähler manifold X. So I guess this is the GIT side and this is the A Mills side maybe. Kähler manifold X gets replaced with the space of connections, which we identified with the space of the holomorphic structures. Um, so our complex reductive group G gets replaced by this complexified gauge group. Our maximal compact gets replaced by the ordinary gauge group. This moment map mu is the mapping A goes to FA. And then the norm squared of mu of the no moment map is the Yang Mills functional. Okay, so the big theorem in the the big theorem. GIT is Kempfness. Uh, our substitute is the 
following theorem. So this is by Narasimhan and Sashadri. Um, okay, so actually a little difficult to state precisely in the way that I want, so this might be a bit confusing. So let A sub S of P is a subset of the space connections denote uh, the subspace of connections that are absolute minima of the Engels functional. So in particular, they exist. Uh, and also, and correspond to irreducible representations. from this group that we defined last time, which is like some central extension of pi one of x uh, to the unitary group. Okay, and then if we let this uh, C sub S of E denote the subset or subspace of stable bundles or stable holomorphic structures Then we have a homeomorphism So you take this subset and you mod out by gauge equivalence and you take the homomorphic structures and then you mod out by the complex gauge group. So I think the original proof only does it for flat bundles and is it more algebraic in flavor and then one more in the spirit of this paper was given a proof more in the spirit of the paper of Atiyah Bhatt was given by Donaldson. And I think the statement is a something like an in, indecomposable, uh, a holomorphic bundle admits uh, a connection with like a certain, uh, such that like star of the curvature is like two pi i times the first turn class of the bundle, which is, you can prove has to be the minimum if and only if it's uh, stable. And then you can reinterpret it in kind of the way I said it. So again, this is our version of the Kempton-S theorem. So note, only works for stable polymorphic structures. Um, so our solution is to essentially ignore it, uh, ignore this problem. So note that if rank, the rank of E and the degree of E are co-prime, then stable is equivalent to semi-stable. Uh, so this is just by numerical reasons. So like if, right, I think Proof is exercise, just think about rational numbers. Okay, um, so drawing on our analogy again, so in the finite dimensional case, so this norm squared at the moment map serves 
as an X, something called something called an equivariant Morse function. And it lets us compute something called equivariant cohomology, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, and what this does is it tells us, it helps us, it tells us the cohomology of the GIT quotient. Or maybe not tells us, but helps us compute. Um, and then this uses the more stratification. So you can look at the gradient flow of some Morse function and then this gives you a stratification of your space. And then if your Morse function is nice, uh, you can essentially use the cohomology of the strata and then there are nice building blocks to get you the cohomology of the total space. So maybe one would hope uh, the Yang-Mills functional is a nice equivariant Morse function. Um, so this is actually true, uh, but the analysis to prove it is really hard, or it at least wasn't done by a TN bot in their paper. So I'll just say it's hard. However, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. So when you say it's a nice MOS function, you are talking of a function on a infinite dimensional space, right? So would you want something like allow uh, the critical points to be submanifolds, or are they still points? Um, so I, I think. So you mean like more spot? Yeah, or the analog of more spot. Um, so what? So probably more spot, but also, uh, so like you know, in Morse theory, like if you have a perfect Morse function, then the Morse inequalities become equalities. Mm -hmm. So nice also means like perfect in that sense, but I'm not exactly touching on that right now. Okay. Um, so like, nice just means good enough to compute cohomology in whatever sense that I will mean later. Okay. Okay. Um, however, we do still have a nice, oh, or we still have a stratification of this space. Um, and then maybe a more realistic thing is one can hope it looks like the more strata of a nice force function. Okay, so what is the stratification? Um, so this is something we talked about yesterday is, so it's called, it's called the hard nara simhan stratification, where you write the whole, the space of all holomorphic structures as the union over all types of something I'm gonna call C sub mu of E. So this is gonna be holomorphic structures of Harder-Narsimhan type 
view. So that's our certification of our space. And then, so also, I kind of mentioned this in passing. That uh, a Yang Mills connection on some principal UN bundle is equivalent to some Hermitian matrix. Maybe up to conjugation uh, with some condition on eigenvalues. Um, and then what, the, uh, so what that condition is, is this condition essentially encodes the slopes of the successive quotients. Of the harder Narasimhan filtration. Uh, of the corresponding holomorphic bundle. Um, so using this perspective, uh, one can show that the stratification, uh, I'll just say form a nice stratification. Uh, so this includes stuff like finite co-dimension and then a few other things. Um, again, I'm not really gonna go into detail what nice means, but for all intents and purposes, it just means good enough it looks like it came from a Morse function and is good enough to compute cohomology. Um, and like the properties you can find in the paper are essentially reverse engineered from what happens in Morse theory. Okay, so that's sort of some motivation for what we're gonna do for the remainder of the course, so. Um, right. Okay, so I'm not going to finish this today, but let's at least start. So this is again, maybe a crash course on equivariant cohomology, um, essentially just all the facts we need to talk about the cohomology of the moduli space of uh, of moduli spaces of bundles. So definition. So think let G be a topological group. Um, maybe you have to add some modifiers like locally compact or paracompact or something. Um, so a classifying space. for G is a space BG such that we have a functorial correspondence so between principal bundles so principal G bundles Uh, over X and then, okay, homotopy classes of maps. From X to PG. So the usual construction of EG is as follows. So if EG is a contractible space uh, 
uh, with a free action. Of G, then EG mod G is a principal G bundle. Um, and serves as what I'll call a model for BG. So the space BG is only well defined up to homotopy equivalence. So if I specifically make a space, I'm going to call it a model for BG. Yeah, Frank, it's not EG mod G that's a principal G bundle. It's or, EG well, is a principal G bundle sorry. over EG, G. sorry, EG to EG mod G. Yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, yes. And then uh, the correspondence uh, sends some homotopy class of maps from X to EG mod G, and then to just the pullback bundle EG. So it's a pullback. So this is a principal G bundle over X. And then, so we'll usually define these together. So we'll call EG to BG. So this is defined to be EG mod G, uh, the universal bundle. Okay. So here's another definition. Uh, suppose G acts on some space X, uh, then the equivariant cohomology of X. So we're just going to denote, denote this by H sub G of X with some with coefficients. Maybe we'll just NZ, but you can use whatever coefficient group you want. And this is just defined to be the ordinary cohomology of the total space of an associated bundle. So EG cross over G with X, um, again, with co whatever coefficients you want. So this is the equivariant cohomology of X. Okay, so, so one thing we should notice we have a map from this associated bundle to X. Um, that's, or should it be X mod G? I think X mod G. Uh, that takes some equivalence class and just forgets half of it. And then one thing you can show is that the fiber over this is EG mod the stabilizer of some representative of that class. Okay, so I think this is, a, yeah, so a corollary is if the G action on X is free, then this map is a homotopy equivalence. Um, so in nice cases, I, this is, you can show this by showing that it's a fiber bundle with contractible fiber, e.g. And, but I think you need stuff to be metrizable for that proof to work. But presumably that's fine in the cases we'll consider. Okay, so here's another useful fact that we'll, we will use. Uh, If X is contractible, then 
the equivariant cohomology of x is the same as just the ordinary cohomology of the classifying space Vg. Um, this one's pretty easy to prove yourself, so I suggest you do it or just accept it. Okay, so I'll just make one more remark on what we're going to be doing next time and then I'll stop, I think. So what's our use case? So just a little bit of setup. So let's pick two integers n and k that are co-prime and let u to x be a Hermitian vector bundle of rank n and degree k. And then let the space we call n of n k is just the semi-stable locus mod the complex gauge group. So this is like our GIT quotient, and it's the moduli space of semi-stable bundles. And then uh, what we're going to do is next is we'll compute the ordinary cohomology of this space. Um, uh, what we're going to use is using the Harden R. Simhan stratification and uh, GC equivariant cohomology. Uh, so that's next time, and uh, I think I will stop here. So if anyone has questions, feel free to. Just unmute yourself. Hey, Jeffrey, I have, I have a question. Yeah. Um, what, so what hap, so if I want, so let G be UN, and let's say I care about the, like the space of, I guess, like, like I care about bungee. It's so like yeah. principal UN bundles on Arima surface. So is, am I looking at basically the connected components of that kind of stuff? Is that what I'm looking at? Uh, so the, like, uh, right. So the components of the space of all bundles would be determined. So a bundle over Arima surface is determined by its, uh, well, it's, it's rank and, and, uh, and first trunk class, right? Topologically. Well, that's only for, that's, is that true for all vector space? I thought that's only true for. That's true for uh, this. Any uh, complex for, vector bundle. No, but if you talk about the groups, then this is only true for simply connected groups. Like this is not okay. true for like PGLN or like SON because you can think uh, there's still like for like SON, for example, there's still like a, what are called Stephen Whitney classes to see whether they lift to spin or not. So like SON has two connected components where spin has one. Okay, so so let's say we're taking a simply connected case then. Or UN isn't I, simply connected though. I'm talking about the simply connectedness of the complexification. Ah, I see. Uh, Wait, it's compl complexification. Uh, yeah, sorry, it should be sorry. S U N. It should be S U N. I think. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm talking about simply groups. Because um, I'm pretty sure for U N they are classified by, or yeah, by turn class and. Well, I mean rank. that's. Well, I mean like well they have the same rank so. Yeah. So just. Are you saying class. that they, they're classified by the turn class? But. Right. Uh, yeah, you can prove that uh, just using the fact that like the classifying space for UN bundles is like a Grassmannian. And then you can look at the two skeleton by like cell cellular approximation and it's like CP2 or something. Ah, and okay. Or CP1. And then it's just degree of the map. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Okay. So, so topologically, I guess 
this it's not very exciting. And yeah, and those are the connected those, components. Those are considering complex structure. Yeah, so this is yeah, like just the com essentially just complex structure because topologically the classification is not too interesting. I see. So in some sense, you are calculating like you are calculating basically cohomology of Bungie. Uh, and I guess yeah. Okay. Yeah. But thank piece you. Piece by piece. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I should uh, also, if you're interested for other G, and if you look in the paper, they do talk about essentially the stratification in the cases of maybe other compactly groups G. But you're it, you miss some things that happen when you're in UN. For example, like torsion and co torsion and the cohomology of other groups kind of messes some things up. I see. Yeah. Thanks.